Welcome to the CE Pro Podcast. I'm Executive Editor Arlen Schweiger. This week, we're saying a fond farewell to Samantha Ventura, Vice President of Education and Training at Cedia for the past three and a half years. During her tenure, Cedia not only introduced its two new stackable credentials, IST and CIT, but also had to accelerate its online training opportunities due to the pandemic. Plus, integration companies right now are so busy that Ventura's job has often been an uphill battle as training takes a backseat to other priorities. On this week's episode of the podcast, she discussed with CE Pro editor Jason Knott where she believes the industry is headed in terms of training and why dealers who take the time to get educated perform better in the field, retain employees at a higher rate, and operate more profitably in the long run. As always, be sure to subscribe to CE Pro's YouTube channel and hit that like button on our videos or subscribe to the CE Pro podcast on Apple and Spotify and leave a review. Hi, Jason Knott with CE Pro, and I am honored and excited to be joined today by Samantha Ventura, the Senior Vice President of Education and Training at Cedia. Hi, Samantha. Hi, Jason. Thank you so much for having me. This is just so wonderful. I love speaking with you. So I was really excited to uh, find the time that we could talk. Well, I know this is uh, probably very bittersweet for you because uh, Samantha has announced that she's going to be departing CD after leading their educational efforts for, for many years. And, but I thought it was just really important to, for you to, to um, speak to our readers and the industry um, you know, through CE Pro. And so I'm, I'm happy that you were gracious enough to accept this invitation to talk to us today. Well, I'm just so happy to do it and happy to be here. And you're right, it's been very bittersweet. So it's great to be able to kind of chat with you and kind of reflect on some of the um, larger things that have happened over the few years and maybe even kind of predict or talk about what I hope for the future. So, and I'm not gone, I'm, I'm definitely gonna still volunteer and, and I love this industry. So just happy to be able to talk about it with you. Fantastic. So tell us a little bit um, about your decision to leave. And I'm sure it must've been a difficult choice to, to, to come come to the conclusion of. Yes, and uh, you know, as you stated, it, it's bittersweet. I absolutely love the industry. I love Cedia and I love our members um, to be part of even, you know, Expo, to be part of the development of the classes and um, just the product roadmap and what we've done and what we've created. It has been really bittersweet. For me, it was really just a decision of, um, you know, we I came in, we got a lot done in three and a half years, really proud of it. We're poised for even more success and to support the industry and our members. Um, and for me, I love, love teaching. I love writing. Those are my first loves. And so, like I said before, I still want to volunteer. I still want to be actively involved, but kind of just want to take a step back and do some of the things that I was doing for a long time before. You know, this is the 26, my 26th year in education in general. Um, last year was the first year I didn't teach at least one online class through IU. And for me, and in, that's in Indiana, Indiana University. And so for me, it's kind of like, uh, that was really tough, but it was just a really, really busy year. So just ready to kind of go back and do some of those things while still supporting the industry from outside of being um, an actual employee at Cedia. Well, we're all jealous. So uh, <laughs> I've heard this. Yes. Yeah. So, um, so you hit on on my next point, which is, what is the state? You know, we've seen so much change, especially with the pandemic and, and so much of, of training that had to be done virtually. What is the state of education right now in the market, both in person and virtually? It's strong. It's strong both. So I will say we were on a really good trajectory. So proud of this team and also the volunteers who have supported the work um, because we didn't miss a beat. Um, we were a little late on a couple things, but honestly, our goal for really two to three years was to build the foundation back up, look at what we've done with the job task analysis and look at what we we're going to do with certification and make two strong certifications. And we did the CIT and the IST stackable credentials, um, good for a career changer, good for somebody just coming into the industry, um, good for somebody wanting to go back and, and revisit what their skill set is and to stay relevant. Really proud of that foundational work. And in addition to that, offered many things online um, in terms of topics that were for a business owner, for somebody uh, just wanting to come back and learn a little bit more. And since that had already been in motion, we also had developed the hybrids for those as well. So then you'd have the second part being in person always stating that the hands-on 
the in-person, the networking, whether at our conferences or whether at our headquarters or with some of our industry partners, that part is super, super important as well. But I think it taught us a valuable lesson, which is we already knew our reach was really important. We knew we needed to keep our best practices in place for our online development, but made us take it uh, to the next level of looking, and even me as an educator, looking from it through the lens of what would this look like for somebody who's just trying to get into the industry, and this was their first step in going through our online education. What are we missing? Um, who are we act actually, you know, letting uh, go along the way, or maybe not having enough focus on because this would be their first step in? They're not going to come to headquarters necessarily. They're going to go to our online classes. So it let us kind of have a little bit of time to reflect on how to do that better. And then what can we do, then do from that and move over into the in-person? So that was a great opportunity. And, and I feel like we're, again, we're very much poised for success to support our members, but overall the industry at large with um, the education that we've developed. Could you make the, the case that the pandemic accelerated and even broadened and exposed more people uh, worldwide to getting educated both from the business standpoint and the technical standpoint, uh, then, then we're limited to be able to do something in person. Absolutely. And that's always been our goal as well. You know, we have global reach. We are a global association um, and the industry is global as a whole. And so often in the past, we noticed that, and this is not scalable. And so this was a problem. We had noticed that a lot of um, people wanted to come only to the in-person. And that was, you know, the heart of what we had done at Cedia in terms of uh, Expo with the, the show floor, but also from the conference standpoint. At ISC as well, we have a smaller conference there, but, you know, just what we do on the show floor. So it kind of was a new opening of the eyes of so many people saying, if we can't come in person now, you know, we're kind of kicking and screaming, but I guess we'll do it online. Oh, wow. It's not, it's actually very valuable. It's not bad. Um, and it, some of what we talk about or some of what we uh, showcase and, and bring to life online is aspirational. We're not saying that you're going to leave and take away every single nugget that's going to take you to the very next level. We're asking you then to take that, in, you know, that information, that education, and possibly move into learning about it through other means or through us in person when we can get together. Um, so I think it also opened the eyes of somebody that when they're coming and taking an education experience from us, whether in person or online, understand what your expectations are, understand what we're going to provide to you and let that be the next step to another one coming up. Um, before, I think it was kind of a one and done sometimes. So it has opened up opportunities for people to understand continuing education and learning and professional development happens in a variety of ways, maybe not just the traditional ones that they were used to. You mentioned the certifications and then obviously CD has got you know the, the technical expertise to to really delve into those technical topics, but something that's near and dear to my heart is being yeah. part of the, the business um, uh, operator, the business team in terms of uh, the group that helped us determine some of the business courses at CD Expo for, for 10 years, is that mix between the business classes and the technical classes. Um, how, where do you see that progressing? I, I'm just excited to see so many more business classes and, and courses being put together by CD that help these people be, help integrators become better um, at, at running their businesses. Where do you see that mix going? Absolutely, it's going uh, it, exponentially. It continues to grow and it should. And so I'm glad you said that. I would love for you to actually volunteer on the business working group because we have a fantastic business working group that helps to support the development of our business classes. When I started three and a half years ago, I remember sitting in on a meeting. Um, we had internal and external people involved, volunteers, a whole group of people. And we were still really focused on talking about tackling the technical topics. But I kept bringing up, you know, one thing that I'm noticing in the evaluations is people taking a really strong, hard look at their bottom line, um, them as leaders. How are we actually supporting from a marketing effort, but also just internally, less turnover, retention, RMR, all these topics where somebody who is very technically sound found themselves doing really well for a lot of years, but had not even thought about succession planning, had not uh, you know, really thought about why can't I keep more technicians? Why are they leaving and going to somewhere else? I've talked about this at length um, and often, I think we've even discussed this where 
as a business owner and in the industry in general, we can develop as much education as we can, and we will continue to do that. But it also needs to be the industry taking the baton, our members taking the baton, and understanding to make this a true and viable career opportunity. We have to strengthen from within and continue to support the education from a leadership standpoint, from better business practices, so that it becomes a professional development and career development opportunity for somebody maybe looking to get into this space, but then they pass us and go into the computer science world because they see a better opportunity at the end. They see better benefits. They see, um, you know, more uh, promise of professional development. So we need to get on, you know, task and on target with that and continue the education and support the industry in general with that. And so I cannot tell you how much I support and push and, uh, and really made this a, a real focal point for the last three and a half years. Our business owners deserve uh, a really good place to come to for learning more about it, but we also as an industry must support those best practices to continue to thrive as an industry. And I think uh, we've seen that. I think the entire industry has seen many more integrators gravitating to take those businesses courses. Mm -hmm. And as I always say, if it doesn't matter how great you are at installing and, and tweaking a system, if okay. your company, you know, can't um, do, you know, manage, you can't manage the projects, you can't do accounting, you can't get the bills paid, you can't, as you yeah. say, retain employees, then then it doesn't matter how great you are from a technical standpoint. So I, I think you've done it. I could definitely could say during your tenure, the business portion of Cedia's uh, offering has definitely improved and I think gotten a better response out there. So that's, Thank you so much. congratulations. Um, all right, let's keep moving on. Um, you know, one of the things that's kind of a, a tricky part is everybody talks about when the market is like so on fire mm -hmm. that integrators are so, they're too busy, quote unquote. They're too busy to do certain things. They're too busy to have that Friday morning meeting with their teams to talk mm -hmm. about education, all those sorts of things. Is it, you know, where does the industry stand right now because the market is so strong and there has been such a demand because of the, of the pandemic and, and many other reasons. Are, are you finding integrators are setting aside the time to get educated or are they still too busy? Both. Um, you know, we've had some that have said to me, I still make this a priority. And I say, congratulations, because that's how you'll continue to thrive. You should be having one-on-ones with your employees. You should be having those meetings. You should be talking about what your culture looks like from the inside out. You should be looking at if you have put in hiring practices that focus on more diversity and inclusion. You should be having those really strong conversations. You should be supporting professional development. It doesn't even have to be paid for, actually, even through CD. You can go to LinkedIn Learning. Some of it's free. I mean, I always say, you know, we may not be the end be all for some of the learning that comes up. And I don't, I am fully okay with that. Um, the idea to push and continue to thrive that way will then again support when the, it's not such a hot market. And for those who say to me, you know, it's really expensive right now. It's a, you know, almost a sunk cost for me. It's like, it's more expensive to not do it in the long run. Um, it, to me, I say this to my team all the time, you know, sometimes life is a chess match and you go back and you say three steps back to go eight steps forward. What is this going to look like? What do I have to put in process and in planning phase now to make sure that I'm supporting a better outcome later? And I don't have to do all of this all over again. Hiring, taking the time to train, all of those things are very expensive. And again, when I first started, I remember having a conversation with someone who was saying, I just, I need more technicians. I need, need more technicians. And I said, okay, well then what I want you to do is work with me to outline how many of you lost over three years and five years. How many of you lost, now why? Well, they just wanted to go on to something else. What was the exit interview for them? What were they saying to you was the reason and the rationale for leaving? Um, was it money? Was it uh, you know lack of professional development? Was it, that they were, you know, found something different than supporting them. So those were some of those conversations that I had uh, in the very beginning. And I think that they have sparked thought and a lot of people understanding that it's not just okay to focus on the time when it's really hot and getting out there and, and doing what you need to do to, to get more financially sound. There's a real foundational aspect of being a good business owner in this industry that supports the long-term. And, and here's the thing, when we're all strong, we're strongest together and it continues to professionalize and make this industry um, a real viable career opportunity for somebody who may be looking around, figuring out what would I like to do as a career changer? Ah, that's where I wanna go because they support the overall process of somebody learning from start to finish and staying within it and doing well. You started on you kind of my next question, which was what is that great blueprint that you've heard out there for 
for setting in place that foundation and then having that continuing education element or creating a career path, um, you know, at what level um, having, you know, lead technicians, project managers, um, the owners, you know, what, what is a, a kind of a good solid blueprint you think that an integrator might want to have in place for how to educate himself, himself or herself, but also then have their staff trained appropriately? Well, and it's for small and large uh, integrator integrators or integrate integrator firms, all kinds of uh, different groups that are out there in our industry. It can start from small or big. It's a holistic understanding of zooming out and being re very reflective. So if there is only one or two people, what are your goals? Start with that and then go backwards. So if I wanna be here X, Y, Z by the end of the year, what does that look like in terms of the process that needs to be put in place? Um, what does this look like for me? What does this look like for the other person working with me? If it's a larger firm, you have to actually stop and say, this is the budget that I'm gonna put in place for this year. I will allot this much here, here and here. And then within those, the framework really starts from what you're willing to do in terms of investment, but also resource time. So as the leader, I have to place in here actual time that will go towards um, making sure that education, discussion, collaboration, research and development, all these things are part of this holistic understanding of being successful, whether I'm one person, two people, or a larger group. Um, recognizing what your goals are and then going back from that and working towards what you can put in place. There are so many things out there right now too that especially for our members are free. I look at the CDS Strong campaign. I look at what we have in our LMS right now, the uh, Academy. Um, a lot of the resources we have for a business owner, we're developing for 2022. And I say we, but they will continue to develop this wonderful business toolkit that for our members will be um, all kinds of different things that they can utilize from marketing, project management, um, RMR suggestions, all those things that they're asking us for, they can then implement into some of these plans. And, you know, at Cedia, we're always available also to kind of work through some of those things with somebody. I have people call me or email me and say, you know, I, I'm trying to figure out, I want to lead this successfully. What's my starting point? It's like, okay, what was your final goal? Now let's work backwards and say, starting from here, just put a plan in place. Don't be daunted. It's, it is a little daunting, but don't be daunted. It's really just an outline of understanding how to map this and then iterate it. So be reflective at the end of the year. What did I not hit? So now for next year, what are those areas that worked really well? Keep going. What are those other areas that we didn't do so well on? Work with the people that you have. Utilize the strengths of them. Often we put people in place and we say, ah, they'd be perfect in this area, not so much in where they already are. Don't get, don't just immediately hook off the, you know, hook them off the stage, work with them of what their talents are. Um, again, hiring someone in and retraining somebody is really expensive and can fracture the culture of your organization, small or big. So work with the talent you have as well and develop a plan with them. And I think the end result is kind of an intangible that the, the owner is going to be happier. The, the, um, there's going to be a greater company culture that, as you say, characterizes itself in less in more retention and less turnover within the group and ultimately happier customers because yes. if everybody in the organization is is happier and better well trained and more efficient and then you know the 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 bigger bin, the big bin, big result is the bottom line because yes. all that efficiency and all that that uh, attitude is going to um, help um, make the company more profitable and run run better so all right last question what what challenges lie ahead for integrators out there to you know either educationally or just in general in the market to, to stay ahead and keep their edge? Well, we hit on all those things. I think from a business owner standpoint, continuing your professional development and understanding how to hit on some of the areas that may have been a little bit weaker. So being very open to your own self-reflection, talk to other people who are successful and say, what are you doing that I could maybe uh, model after uh, and, and put into my own business? And I think from a technical standpoint, you know, there's always the tried and true topics of we've got to look at our employees. We've got to be continuing to develop this workforce. Um, we know that this is a skilled trade that needs to be focused on, professionalized, and again, made uh, 
uh, relevant and viable as a career opportunity. So support that from that standpoint, but then also recognize that there are trends coming down the pike that there's always competition. And now I look at it and think to myself, our competition with the DIY is still big. Um, looking at uh, security, RMR, all these kinds of things that you continuing to press the, you know, push the needle or press or move the, push the envelope, move the needle on are really, really important. And those are the things that sometimes you, like I was saying in the very beginning, you may not walk away with an exact plan, but it's aspirational often when you're hearing about these things, take the time to delve into them. Even if you only had two or three topics a year um, from a technical standpoint and a business, but those were your themes, if you will, within your smaller or larger organization, that gives your whole group and also you, a North Star to focus towards. So it's just starting somewhere, start somewhere. I think apathy and also often just being very stagnant is what then causes people internally to say, I'd rather work for that organization because even though they're smaller and I may actually take a little pay cut, it makes me feel better. It makes me feel like I'm more stable. And during the pandemic, that's what we saw a lot of people saying, I'm not even so much worried right now about like the money piece. I know I still have a job. It's the instability of it. Like, are we staying competitive? Are we being worried about the right things? They want to know that there's a plan. We want to know that we can control some of the things that are out there. And so even things that are, un are outside of our control if we have a North Star and a plan that's being supported by our leader, it makes us feel really grounded. And that's really good, especially where we are as a world right now, to be honest. Well, you know, one of the things that's so exciting about this, this industry is the entrepreneurial spirit. And yes. I know at CE Pro, we really get a thrill out of hearing from integrators who tell us that they have you know read something in CE Pro online or in the magazine and applied it to their business. and it has proven fruitful and helpful. And so what you've done for the past three and a half years to lay the groundwork for so many integrators who probably haven't had a chance to thank you uh, personally, but years to come, the, your thanks will be that all of those companies are gonna thrive and not just survive, but thrive and do well because of the what you set in place foundationally for Cedia. So on behalf of the entire industry, Samantha, thank you for, for what you've done and congratulations on your next journey ahead. And thanks for joining CE Pro today. Thank you so much. And again, thanks for having me. And I've always loved reading your things too. And it's wonderful to always collaborate and support each other because that's really what it's all about. So thank you very much.